Alexander Armstrong and this is Pointless, the quiz show where the lowest scorers are the biggest winners. To stay in the game, our contestants need to score as few points as possible. How do they score as few points as possible? Well, they need to come up with the most obscure answers they can muster. We've asked all our questions on Pointless to 100 people before the show. Can you plumb the depths of your knowledge to find those elusive answers that no one else can think of? So, for example, we gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many people on English banknotes as they could, and we found out that... 70 of them said Queen Elizabeth II, an obvious answer that would score you a horribly high 70 points. However, only... 28 of them said Isaac Newton, a lesser-known answer that would score you a respectably low 28 points. Now, occasionally there are even some answers that none of our 100 people could name. So, for example, none of them said Sir John Hublin. So that would have been a truly pointless answer and would score you... Absolutely nothing. There you are, you see, that's just what you want. If you find any of those, then we will add £250 to today's jackpot. Right, let's meet today's players. <laughs> Welcome, Zena and Julie. You are our first pair on the show. How do you two know each other? Uh, we are mother and daughter. Uh, Mum shows Shih Tzus and I show English Toy Terriers and we're from Warsaw in the West Midlands. Very good. Well, a warm welcome to both of you. I hope you do very well this afternoon. Simon and Martin, you are our second pair today. Welcome to the show. How do you two know each other? Uh, Simon is my son-in-law. I had to get rid of my daughter somehow. He volunteered. <laughs> <laughs> is he watching? <laughs> no, I hope not. Um, very good. Well, best of luck to the pair of you. Our third pair are Daniel and John. Welcome back. We give everyone two chances to reach the pointless final, and today is your second and final chance. Remind us how you two know each other. Uh, we were ex-work colleagues. Daniel came to work for me about ten years ago when I was a manager of a betting shop, and he became my assistant manager. And uh, luckily enough, I was asked to be his best man four years ago. Well, best of luck to the pair of you. And welcome back to our fourth pair today, Michelle and Ivor. This is your second and final chance on Pointless. Remind us who you are. It's my dad. I've known him about 32 years. Uh, he's been married to my mum, Cathy, for nearly 32 years, and he's the granddad of my son, Daniel. Marvellous. Well, welcome back to the pair Thank of you. you. I hope you do very well this afternoon. And finally, we've got Graham and Bob. Welcome to the show. How do you two know each other? Well, we've known each other for about 17 years when Bob was a barman in a pub we used to frequent. Um, we've worked together quite Hang recently. On, Bob, 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 you must have been a barman aged about five. <laughs> yeah, I'm good for my age, aren't I? Yeah. yeah. yeah absolutely. That's yeah, very impressive. Well, best of luck to the pair of you. Of course, there is one final person I need to introduce to you all. Here's the man with all the pointless facts and figures. Here's my pointless friend. It's Richard. <laughs> Richard, how are you? I'm very well. How are you? Uh, what's, I'm extremely well. What sort of show have we Excellent. got today? Uh, yeah, great show today. Uh, as always, you don't know any of the questions we've got coming up on today's show or any of the answers. I've got them all here. Uh, and at the end of each round, I'll be going through all the, the pointless answers, the things that no one in our hundred said. So if you're playing along at home, you can see how you've done. I'll also take you through the most obvious answers, the answers you should avoid, the things that everybody in our hundred said. Uh, and I'll do that at the end of each question. Very good, thank you. Today's jackpot starts off again at... £1,000. <laughs> and remember, if you find some pointless answers along the way, each one of those will add £250 to that amount. OK, let's play Pointless. <laughs> so, in the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. You'll score one point for every one of the 100 people that gave that same answer. And remember, this is Pointless. You're trying to score the least you possibly can by finding those little-known answers. If anyone gives me an incorrect answer, they will score the maximum of 100 points, so do be careful. If you do give an incorrect answer... This will happen. You really don't want to see that. At the end of your round, the combined score will be totaled up and the highest scoring pair will be eliminated. Only two pairs obviously make it through to our head-to-head -head semi-final, so the pressure is really on. Our first category is... Geography. <sighs> Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first? <laughs> right, whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. Right, let's find out what our first question is going to be. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many countries with six-letter names as they could. 
Richard, elaborate on that. Yeah, I can't elaborate too much on that. Essentially, we're looking for any of the 30 countries in the world uh, whose name has just six letters. As always, when I talk about countries, we mean members of the UN that are sovereign states. Right. Zena and Julie, before the show, you all drew lots, and today it turns out you will be starting us off. So, Zena, let's have a country of six letters. Africa. OK, we are looking to score as few points as oh, possible. Okay. Of course, if that's a wrong answer, you will score the maximum 100 points. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Africa. Dan, 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 Unfortunately, that is a wrong answer, which yeah. means you score the maximum of 100 yeah, points. Man. Richard, I've just worked out. See, I like Xena. It's just dawned on me. Yeah, well, also, there's nothing yeah. wrong with the maths. Africa does have six letters, but uh, it's a continent yeah. rather than a country. <laughs> Sorry. Ah, uh, well. Not the best start, but there's the whole game to make up for it. OK, on to our next pair. Martin, we are looking for countries with six-letter names. What are you going to say? Brunei. Brunei. Fabulous. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Brunei. It's good. It's very good. Look at that. Down it goes. Hey! That means that none of our 100 people said Brunei, and that adds £250 to today's jackpot. It now stands at £1,250. <laughs> Good work, Martin. Richard, Brunei. How yeah, great that? start. Well done, Martin. It, it, was, it was actually British till 1984, but now it's uh, an independent sultanate. Sultanate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Excellent. On to our third pair, John. We are looking for countries with six-letter names. What are you going to give me? Uh, we'll see if we can match that. Belize. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Belize. It's a correct answer. It's another good one. That means one of our 100 people said Belize. Oh, it's, it's almost cruel, isn't it? <laughs> one of them to remember Belize. Couldn't they have just forgotten it just for a minute? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. So nearly another pointless. But uh, a very good low score there for you. On to our fourth pair. Michelle. Uh, it's a decision between one of two. Um, I'm going to say Sweden. Sweden. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Sweden. It's another good one. Yeah. <laughs> that means 30 of our 100 people said Sweden. That gives Michelle and Iva a score of 30. On to our final pair. Graham, what are you going to say? I am going to go with uh, probably the world's greatest footballer, Brazil. Brazil. We are looking for countries with six-letter names. Graham is giving me Brazil. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Brazil. Eight of our 100 people said Brazil. That gives Graham and Bob a score of eight. OK, we are halfway through the round. Let's see where we are on the scoreboard. Well, obviously, Simon and Martin are doing fantastically well with a brilliant low score of zero. Keep up that low scoring, guys, and you will definitely be through to the next round. Zena and Julie. Oh, dear. Looking a little bit dangerous there on 100 points. You've got to try and find a pointless answer on the next pass and hope everyone else scores as high as they possibly can. Right, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? We are looking for countries with six-letter names. Graham and Bob, you are on eight. Our high scores at the moment are Julie and Zena on 100. If you want to avoid overtaking them and becoming the new high scorers, you have to score 91 or less with this answer. Bob, what's it going to be? Uganda. Uganda. OK, there is the safety line. If you come in below that red line, you are definitely through to the next round. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Uganda. It's good. Oh, it's very good. Look at that. That means two of our 100 people said Uganda. That brings your total up to ten. You are definitely in the next round. On to our next pair, Ivor. 
Your score is currently 30. To avoid becoming the high scorers and overtaking Julie and Zena on 100, you have to score 69 or less. Uh, I'm going to go with Chile. You're going to go with Chile for our six letter country. <laughs> if it is an incorrect answer, you will score the maximum of 100 points. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Chile. Michelle, you took the very words out of my mouth. Unfortunately, <laughs> that is a wrong answer. That means you score the maximum of 100 points. Great news for Julie and Zena. Richard, Chile. Yeah, Chile is the opposite problem to Zena there. Chile, I can confirm, is a country, but it's just five letters. C-H-I-L-E. Not the way I spell it. <laughs> <laughs> Ivor and Michelle, you are now the high scorers. That means Daniel and John and Simon and Martin are definitely through to the next round because even if they score the maximum of 100 points, they still won't overtake your high score there. Nice chance to find some pointless answers, guys. See if you can add another £250 to our jackpot. Daniel and John, we are looking for countries with six-letter names. I'm going to head to Africa and I'm going to go to Malawi. You're going to go for Malawi? Let's see how many of our 100 people said Malawi. It's the right answer. Ooh, it's good. Look at that! <laughs> that means that none of our 100 people have said Malawi, and it adds another £250 to today's jackpot, which now stands at a total of £1,500. <laughs> Very impressive. That gives you a total combined score of one. <laughs> good work. On to our next pair. Simon, we are looking for countries with six letter names. You scored a pointless in the first pass. See if you can find another pointless answer that none of our 100 people could think of. Not wanting to be outdone, I'm trying to think. I've got two places in mind, but uh, I'll try Borneo. Borneo. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Borneo. Unfortunately, that is a wrong answer, which means you score the maximum of 100 points. Richard, Borneo. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the third largest island in the world, but it's not its own country. It's actually, uh, part of it is Indonesia, part of it is Malaysia, and part of it, I think, is uh, Brunei. Bad luck. Well, you were stood in good stead by Martin's pointless early on, so you're definitely through to the next round. On to Julie and Zena. Now, you are currently on 100 points. You have to score 29 or less with this answer, otherwise you are off the show. What's it going to be, Julie? Well, if I'd have gone first, I'd have given you the same answer as my mother. <laughs> okay. Geography runs in the family. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think I'm going to go with... Mexico. OK, you're going to go with Mexico. You are currently on 100. Mexico has to score you 29 points or less. Just to rub it in, there's the line. <laughs> Below that red line and you're safe. You're through to the next round. Above that red line and I'm afraid we'll be saying goodbye to you. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Mexico. of our 100 people that said Mexico. That brings your total up to 108. Well Great news for you, Julie and Zena. Bad news for Ivor and Michelle. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Well, at the end of round one, the losing pair with the highest score is Michelle and Ivor. Not a strong suit for you, was it? No. Oh, so many dear. could have had. All in my head now. <laughs> Richard, what should they have gone for? There were six pointless answers. If you've got any of these at home, well done. Let's take a look at them. Uh, Bhutan was one. Brunei, which, uh, which Martin gave us. Uh, Malawi, which Daniel gave us. Three others. Monaco uh -huh. was, uh, was pointless. Rwanda and Africa. And Tuvalu, the, f the fourth smallest country in the world, was also uh, pointless. God bless it. Uh, we'll take a look at the most obvious answers, the worst things you could have said uh, if you weren't saying Chile or Africa. Uh, you could have said um, Russia. That was the, uh, was, was the third biggest answer. Michelle, you gave us the second worst answer, which was Sweden. And uh, the most popular answer of all, the worst answer you could have given, was France. Thanks, Rich. 
Michelle and Iva, that was your second and final chance on the show. I'm afraid you just didn't have that pointless geography knowledge you needed to get through to the final. So I'm afraid we do have to say goodbye, but thanks so much for playing. You've been great. <laughs> for the remaining four pairs, though, it's time for round two. <laughs> OK, guys, the round two category is... Words. Words. OK, can you decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? OK. And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. <laughs> now, remember, pointless is all about scoring the fewest points. OK, so you need to rack your brains for those obscure and unheard of answers that you think the fewest of our 100 people said. With that in mind, let's find out what the next question is going to be. So, we gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many words that end in O-U-G-H as they could. Could you be more specific than that, Richard? Yes, O-U-G-H. We're looking for any word ending in that that's in the Oxford English Dictionary. No proper nouns and no hyphenated words, but apart from that, any word ending O-U-G-H. There are 64 of them in the English language. OK, Zena. Have you got the 100 ready? <laughs> I think we may have. <laughs> I don't think we'll need it, though. We won't need it. We won't need it. Trough. Let's see how many of our 100 people also said trough. It's going down, Zena. Look at that. Down it goes. Very good. That means 27 of our 100 people said trough. Not a bad score to kick us off with, Zena. 27. Okay. Martin, we are looking for words that end in O-U-G-H. Um, I, I hope it's acceptable. Borough. OK, you're going to go with borough. Let's see how many of our 100 people said borough. It's a correct answer. Not bad. That means 35 of our 100 people said borough. That gives Martin and Simon a score of 35. OK, on to John. Uh, well, I've got a bit of a tickly throat at the moment, but it could be a cough. It, it, yeah, it, it might be. Anyway, what are you going to give me, John? <laughs> cough. I see what you're saying. I see. <laughs> Let's see how many of our 100 people said cough. <laughs> Quite a popular one, that. That means 69 of our 100 people said cough. OK, on to our fourth pair. Bob, what are you going to say? Enough. Enough. Oh, I like that. We're looking for words that end in O-U-G-H. Bob is giving me enough. OK, how many of our 100 people said enough? <laughs> that means 53 of our 100 people said enough. That brings your score to 53. OK, we are halfway through the round. Let's see how we're doing on the scoreboard. Well, Zena and Julie looking fantastic there on 27. Keep up that low scoring and you'll be through to the next round without any trouble at all. Daniel and John looking a little bit more dangerous there on 69. You've got to try and find a really low score for the next pass and hope everyone else scores as high as they can. Now we're going to come back up the line. Will the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, Graham, we are looking for words that end in O-U-G-H. You are currently on 53. Our high scorers are Daniel and John on 69. To avoid becoming the high scorers and overtaking them, you need to score 15 or less with this answer. We're looking for words that end in O-U-G-H. So then, Graham, what's it going to be? I'm going to stick a T-H on the front and go with though. You're going to go with though. To be absolutely safe, and sure of a place in the next round, you want to be coming in below that red line. <clears throat> Let's see how many of our 100 people said though. <laughs> that means 44 of our 100 people said though. That brings your total up to 97. You are now our highest scorers on 97, but everyone else has another turn. Daniel. You were the high scorers on 69. To avoid becoming the high scorers again, you want to be scoring 27 or less. What are you going to say? I'm going to put a D on the front and say DO. You're going to put a D on the front and say DO. Here comes the red line. You have to be below that red line to get through to the next round. Let's see how many of our 100 people said DO.
That means 42 of our 100 people said doe. That brings your total up to 111. You are now our high scorers. OK, Simon and Martin, you're currently on 35. To avoid becoming the high scorers and overtaking Daniel and John on 111, you want to be scoring 75 or less with this. Simon, what are you going to say? Well, if uh, John had a cough, I think he would feel a bit rough, so I'll say rough, R-O-U-G-H. Very good. Let's see how many of our 100 people said rough. It's good. Just. That means 61 of our 100 people said rough. That takes your total up to 96. OK, Julie and Zena, you are our low scorers on 27. You need to be scoring 83 or less to avoid becoming the high scorers and being eliminated. We are looking for words that end in O-U-G-H. What are you going to say? Plough. Plough. OK, here's your red line. If you are below that red line, you are definitely through to the next round. Let's see how many of our 100 people said plough. It's good. Yes! It's very good. Look at that. <laughs> that means 24 of our 100 people said plough. That brings your total up to 51. So at the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score is Daniel and John. Bad luck, guys. 111. Not too high a score, but I'm afraid everyone else was scoring just a little bit lower. Round two seems to be the hurdle you're falling at, doesn't it? And nemesis. Yeah, that's yeah. right. It was, that was where you went out last time. And I'm afraid that's where you've gone out this time. Richard, what should they have said if they'd wanted to stay in? There were 40 pointless answers on this one, 40 words ending O-G-O-H, which nobody knew, and for good reason, looking at most of them. Uh, let's have a look at a couple of them. I won't go through everything. Breakthrough would have been a pointless answer. Uh, hiccup would have been a pointless answer. That's how you spell it. Now, this next word, R... W-R-O-U-G-H, it's the sound that a pig makes. So I wouldn't pretend to know how to pronounce it. Oh, really? That. Uh, let's take a look at the next three. I'll give you three more. Uh, Julie, you said plough. If you if you'd decided to re-plough, you would have got a, a pointless answer. Uh, a yarborough is, a, is a, a hand in bridge or whist with no cards above nine and walk through. Let's take a look at the, uh, the worst three things you possibly could have gone for. Simon, you gave us rough, which was the, the third most uh, obvious answer. Second most was tough. Is what this round was, and uh, John Cough was the uh, the most obvious answer of them all. I think that's probably enough, don't you? <laughs> That'll do for now. <clears throat> Thanks very much, Richard, Daniel, and John. That was your second and final chance on the show. You clearly just don't have that pointless word knowledge you need to get through to our final. So I'm afraid we do have to say goodbye. But thanks so much for playing. <laughs> for the remaining three pairs, though, it's time for round three. Now, obviously, only two pairs will make it through to the head-to-head, -head, so this is your final chance. All of you need to find those low-scoring answers to stay in the game. The round three category is... Classic film. Classic film. OK, so who's going first? Who's going second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is going to be. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Alfred Hitchcock films as they oh. could. Richard, elaborate. Yeah, we're looking for any feature film made for cinema release for which uh, Alfred Hitchcock is credited as the director. Now, he made, over his career, he made 53 films uh, all the way from the, from the mid-20s through to the 70s, so uh, an awful lot to choose from. OK. Remember, you need to score the fewest points, so you need to give the answer that the fewest of our 100 people said. OK, Zena, you are first. What's it going to be? The birds. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said the birds. <laughs> that means 91 of our 100 people said the birds. That gives Zena and Julie a high score of 91. On to our next pair, Martin. We are looking for Alfred Hitchcock films. What are you going to give me? Well, I have two in mind. Uh, I think Rear Window. OK, you're going to go with Rear Window. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Rear Window. Oh, it's good. Very good. That means 22 of our 100 people said Rear Window. That gives Martin and Simon 
A score of 22. Bob, what are you going to give me? I got two. Uh, I'm going to go for a risky strategy. The mirror cracked. The mirror cracked. Let's see how many of our 100 people said the mirror cracked. Unfortunately, that is an incorrect answer. That means you score the maximum of 100 points. So, Richard, the mirror cracked. Yeah, The Mirror Correct, it's a, it's a Miss Marple story, one of the most famous of the Agatha Christie novels, and it has been made into movies a couple of times, but not, not by Hitchcock, I'm afraid. Bad luck. OK, well, we are halfway through the round. Let's see where we are on the scoreboard. Simon and Martin looking pretty good on 22. Keep up that low scoring and you'll definitely be through to the next round. Graham and Bob now looking very vulnerable there on 100. You've got to see if you can find a pointless answer on the return and hope everyone else scores as high as they can, otherwise you will be leaving the show. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Will the second players please step up to the podium? OK, we are looking for Alfred Hitchcock films. Graham and Bob, you are now the highest scorers on 100. Graham, you've got to find a really obscure one here to get yourself well, out that of was, hot. that was going to be Bob's round, I think, the, the classic <sighs> movies. Um, so I'm going to have to play it safe after his risky strategy, hoping that I'm not all the way up here going to get vertigo. Let's see how many of our 100 people said vertigo. It's good. That means 13 of our 100 people said there to go. That brings your total up to 113. OK, Simon and Martin, you are on 22. Bob and Graham are way ahead on 113. <laughs> to avoid overtaking them and becoming the high scorers, you have to score 90 or less. Simon, what are you going to say? Well, vertical was the, the only one that I could think of. <laughs> and apart from that... I'm really struggling. I can only think of, uh, and I'm hoping it is a Hitchcock, 39 steps. 39 steps. Of course, if that's a wrong answer, you will score the maximum 100 points. You only have to come below that red line to be through to the next round. Above that red line and you risk being the high scorers and being eliminated. Let's see how many of our 100 people said the 39 steps. It's good, and you're through. It's very good. Look at that. That means only seven of our 100 people said the 39 steps. That brings your total up to 29. Wow. OK, Julie and Zena, you are currently on 91. You have to score 21 or less to avoid being eliminated. OK, we are looking for Alfred Hitchcock films. Julie, what are you going to give me? Well, I'm going to give him a smack for nicking me answer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we all know what the obvious one is. Uh, the only other one I can think of of that era uh, was the Lady Killers. Let's see how many of our 100 people said the Lady Killers. Mm. Unfortunately, that is a wrong answer. That means you score the maximum of 100 points. So at the end of round three, the losing pair with the highest score is Zena and Julie. Bad luck. Mm. Bad luck. You had the 39 <laughs> steps there. I had that. I, yeah. I could hear you. And Psycho. And <laughs> Psycho. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> and that is scary. <laughs> um, Richard, what other answers should they have gone for? Psycho was one of the ones they were going to say. I wonder what that would have scored. Well, we'll take a look at that when we, when we look at the most obvious answers. Uh, the Lady Killers, was, it, it was that sort of era, but it was an Ealing comedy. Alexander McKendrick. Was the, uh, was the director of that. There were, there were 26 pointless answers. I mean, he's done a huge amount of films, and uh, you know, a lot of these are very early ones. If we take a look at a few of them, Notorious, unbelievably, was a, uh, was, was a pointless answer. Cary Grant, Ingrid Bergman, Jamaica Inn, which is the last movie he made in England before he went over to Hollywood, uh, Juno and the Peacock. Let's just look at one more page. I won't go through everything. Mr. and Mrs. Smith, which was a rare screwball comedy. Not entirely successful. Murder and uh, the Marlena Dietrich film Stage Fright would also have been uh, pointless. We, we take a look at the worst answers you could have given. Martin, you gave us the, uh, the third worst, which was Rear Window. Mm. Uh, unbelievably, the second worst was Psycho. Psycho was uh, beaten and beaten heavily by the very worst answer, which, uh, Zeno, you'll know well, it was The Birds. Beat Psycho by miles. Those are the three worst answers. Oh, wow. 
Well, there we are. Thanks, Richard. OK, Zina and Julie, you've wasted one of your chances to get through to the pointless final. But we have to say goodbye to you now. We'll see you next time for your last chance. But thanks so much for playing. Thanks. <laughs> of the remaining two pairs, things are about to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> so, well done, Graham and Bob, Simon and Martin. You've made it through to the head-to-head. -head. Now, only one pair can make it through to today's final and play for today's jackpot, which currently stands at... £1,500. <laughs> OK, here's how the head-to-head -head works. You are now allowed to confer. Each team will take turns to give me an answer, and you'll each have an equal number of turns. The first team that accumulates more than 100 points or the team that goes over 100 by the most will lose. So, as always, to stay in the game, you want to score as few points as possible by saying those answers that the fewest of our 100 people gave. OK, Graham and Bob, you performed best over the first three rounds, so not only do you get to decide whether or not you go first, you also get to choose our topic. And your choice is between... ..test cricket or musical instruments. Yeah, we're going to go for um, musical instruments, thanks. You're going to go for musical instruments. Would you like to go first or second? We will go first. Musical instruments, and you're going to go first. Let's play Pointless. <laughs> OK, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many instruments played by the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra as they could. Richard, you know what I'm going to ask? Yeah, we're looking for the names of instruments uh, played in concert by the strings the woodwind and the brass sections of the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. No percussion instruments. Remember, you don't want to go over 100, so you want to score the lowest number of points each time. What are those orchestral instruments that no one else could think of? OK, Graham and Bob, you wanted to go first. So here goes. What's your first answer going to be? Viola. 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 Let's see how many of our 100 people said viola. That's a correct answer. 53 of our 100 people said viola. That means after one answer, your score is 53. OK, Simon and Martin, what's your first answer going to be? Okay, you <laughs> uh, piccolo. Piccolo. Let's see how many of our 100 people said piccolo. Good. That means 25 of our 100 people said piccolo. OK, Graham and Bob. We are looking for instruments in the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. You need to be careful now. Your next answer could take you over 100 points and you could risk leaving the game. Your next answer needs to score 47 or less to avoid going over that 100 mark. We're going to try French horn. French horn. Let's see how many of our 100 people said French horn. It's a correct answer. It's good. That means 29 of our 100 people said French horn. That takes your score after your second answer up to 82. OK, Simon and Martin, you are currently on 25. To avoid going over 100, you have to score 75 or less. What's your second answer going to be? Oboe. Oboe. OK, there is your red line. If you are below that red line, you have not gone over 100. If you are above that red line, you have gone over 100 and you will be eliminated. Let's see how many of our 100 people said oboe. It's good. <laughs> that means 47 of our 100 people said oboe, and that takes your total up to 72. After two answers each, the scores are Graham and Bob on 82, Simon and Martin on 72. It's pretty close. Graham and Bob, we are looking for instruments in the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. Your third answer, please. We're going to go with soprano saxophone. 
soprano saxophone. You are currently on 82. To avoid going over 100, you have to score 18 or less. There's your red line. You have to be below that red line to avoid going over 100. Soprano saxophone. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Never mind. Now, unfortunately, that is an incorrect answer. You score the maximum of 100 points there. That takes your score up to 182. Simon and Martin, normally we'd ask you to give another answer so that both teams have had an equal number of turns, but you've scored so few points that even if you scored the maximum, you still wouldn't overtake Graham and Bob on 182. So I'm afraid, Graham and Bob, you leave us now. And Simon and Martin, you are through to the final. Dear, oh dear. Well, it was very close. You were doing very well there. But, uh, yeah, I'm afraid soprano saxophone just let you down. Richard, what else should they have gone with? Well, it was a difficult one. There were no pointless answers at all. Uh, everything scored quite highly apart from one. The lowest score you could have got would have been two for, for the core anglais or uh, English horn. Uh, and then piccolo and bassoon would have got you 25 and 26. It was a very high scoring round. The most obvious answers, uh, flute was the third worst answer you could have given, would have got you uh, 66 points. Uh, the second was trumpet. And the worst answer you could have given me, guys, do you want to have a little guess as your part Double of violin. Violin. violin is exactly right. Was, was the worst answer you could have given. OK, well, thanks, Richard. Graham and Bob, you have to say goodbye for today. But we'll see you next time for your last chance. Thank you so much for playing. <laughs> but for Simon and Martin, it's time for our pointless final. So congratulations, Simon and Martin. It's only your first time on the show and you've made it to the end of Pointless. You've fought off all the competition and you've won our coveted Pointless trophy. <laughs> now you've got a chance to win our Pointless jackpot. At the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at... £1,500. <laughs> Well, the rules are very simple. To win that money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer that none of our 100 people could think of. We've had two pointless answers today, one of which was given by you, Martin. All you have to do is find another one, OK? First, you have to choose a category from these three options. And you can go for... European politics, award-winning authors, or radio personalities. <laughs> Martin, you're not, not looking very happy. <laughs> no. Um, what do you think? Authors. Award-winning authors, I think. Award you're going to go for award-winning authors. Yeah. OK, well, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many authors that have won the Man Booker Prize as they could. Richard. Yeah. yeah, we're looking for any author who's won the Man Booker Prize since its inception. It used to be the, the, the Booker McConnell Prize and then just the Booker Prize, but it's the same thing. Any author who's won it since its inception, there are 39 winners. Right, you now have up to one minute to come up with three answers, and all you need to win that £1,500 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Your 60 seconds start now. Well, it's Shanda and Nia Paul. No, I pull. Yeah. Um, God. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be difficult. I can't. I, I just. Booker press, Booker press, Booker, 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 female. Um, females, um, females, females, females. I, I just, I just can't think. The mind's gone totally. Um, uh, I haven't got a clue. I'm trying to um, get 15 seconds, Jack Jacqueline Smith, I think, was... 20 seconds a left. child author, wasn't she, Jack? Yeah. Uh, oh, Pullman. Who? Pullman. He wrote the... Um, trilogy. Pullman. Yeah, the... Right. Um, Pullman. Nye Paul. Right, do those. And You've I think more. Smith. I think. Right. We'll go with your trust. OK, your thought. time is up. Trust. OK. Have right. you thought of your three answers? Yeah. I think so. <laughs> OK. Right. Um, Jacqueline Wilson. Jacqueline Wilson. Um, Pullman. I'm not sure of his first name. Pullman. Yeah. And Nye Paul. Nye Paul. Yeah. 
We are looking for authors that have won the Man Booker Prize. OK, so Jacqueline Wilson, Philip Pullman and V.S. Naipaul. OK, let's try your first answer. This for the jackpot of £1,500. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Jacqueline Wilson. This has to be a pointless answer for you to win the jackpot. It's gone all the way around. That answer is incorrect. So, unfortunately, that is not a pointless answer. You now have only two chances left to win today's jackpot. We're looking for authors that have won the Man Booker Prize. Let's hope none of our 100 people went with your second answer, Philip Pullman. This is your second of three chances to win today's jackpot of £1,500. Philip Pullman. Oh. Unfortunately, that is also an incorrect answer. That is not a pointless answer. You only have one final chance to win today's jackpot. We've really got to hope that none of our 100 people had V.S. Naipaul. <laughs> Feeling confident? No. You're I'm pretty not. sure he won, though? I'm pretty sure he won. We're looking for authors that have won the Man Booker Prize. How many of our 100 people yeah. said V.S. Naipaul? This has to be pointless. Well, it's right. Oh, go on, go on. Go this on. for fifteen hundred pounds. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. And it goes. Keep going. £1,500. <laughs> Out of the jaws of defeat. Oh, you thought you'd lost that, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, oh. definitely. You also managed to give me the answers in, in the best order possible. I mean, we've got all the drama we could have needed out of that. Thank you. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Good for V.S. Naipaul. So that's why I trusted him. You were right to. Yeah. Have you read V.S. Naipaul, though? No. Well, congratulations. Thank well you done. You've won the jackpot. So, Richard, another winner. Yeah, fantastic. I, I recommend you take some of your money and, and, and spend it on In a Free State, which was his novel, which won in 1971. I think, you know, you've got to, have, you've got to read it now, haven't you? Well, so, yeah. So, yeah. But there were a, a few other big hitters in the pointless answers there. Iris Murdoch, Kingsley Amis, uh, Margaret Atwood, J.M. Curtsy, A.S. Byatt, but... Yeah. You know what, Philip, Philip Pullman didn't win, Jacqueline Wilson didn't win, but who cares? V.S. Naipaul did. Well done. Thank you. Thanks very much. So, Simon and Martin have won today's jackpot. Join us next time when we put more obscure knowledge and forgotten facts to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And goodbye from me. Goodbye. Goodbye.